Hey folks, it's Philip with the Everyday Fighter Podcast, where we share stories and insights from everyday fighters just like you. I wanted to welcome you to this episode. Today, we are talking with John Williams. Now, John is a a friend of mine, um, met through uh, Facebook, and I call him the bruiser. (laughs) We, uh, kind of a funny thing that we do, we we trade um, kind of workout videos uh, as far as like, you know, boxing techniques, etc. Um, back and forth once in a while. And um, I call him the bruiser because whenever I see him work in a heavy bag, I feel like I'm getting bruised up just as much as the bag it does. So uh, today we talked to him about um, it's kind of growing up a uh, kind of an awkward introverted kid and finding his way past that awkwardness, getting to a point where he built his body up, but even more so beyond that, building up his confidence to be able to realize the strength that was already in him and ultimately becoming what he would call a sheepdog to his family. So completely uh, different persona from what he had uh, grown up seeing himself as. And Really enjoyed this conversation with him uh, as far as his philosophies around that and uh, his journey in getting to to that point. But uh, before we do that, I wanted to get into our episode spotlight. And today, I wanted to actually spotlight two things. The first is, if it's such that you are having challenges emotionally, mentally, where you feel like you're alone and you're having some uh, thoughts about, you know, possibly, you know, taking a road to doing harm to yourself, I urge you, do not do that. Instead, give these folks a call. It's the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline. Their number is 1-800-273-8255. And Give yourself the chance to talk to someone about the things that you're going through. It's not necessarily such that they might have answers for you, but just I know sometimes for myself, um, when I'm holding a lot of things in, I haven't spoken to somebody in a long time, uh, particularly about my problems, It's uh, it can be a very easy downward spiral to stay in. And yet when I find that when I have a bit of release, when I just let a bit of that go, to someone, um, just just to listen, it helps me out tremendously. So I would urge you to uh, do that. Again, that's the uh, uh, National Suicide Prevention Lifeline. That is at 1-800-273-8255. But I also wanted to highlight you because you have a lot more power and a lot more strength than you realize. And I'd say not necessarily if you look at it for yourself, more so if you look at it for someone else. I know when there are times when I'm stuck just in, in, you know, just kind of in a rut, a lot of times it's because of, and because I stay in thoughts of myself, things where you know, I feel like I'm, you know, not meeting up to certain expectations I might have for for myself. Um, and it could be a challenge, especially when, you know, you, uh, you're used to kind of beating up on yourself that way. Yet I've found that when I am able to shift the focus away from me, and I think of helping somebody else, actually serving somebody else, man, it really, it really helps me out as well. Not only in terms of just being able to get the feeling, good feeling of helping a fellow human being. I mean, you know, just if I see somebody suffering, if I see somebody that tripped, fell on their, you know, on their uh, hands and knees, I'd want to go pick them up, you know, help them up, right? And it just makes me feel better that, oh my gosh, I was able to do that. Um, so it, it, one, it, it helps me personally to do that, but I, I, sometimes I don't even go this route, but then I think at times, okay, well, wow, I actually, 
what was that like for that person to receive help from me? How much more, how much brighter is their day because of some help they might have received from me? Now, whether it was actually helping them up from the ground or even just paying a compliment to them. That doesn't have to be somebody that is completely just in, in a rut. And a lot of times we don't see a lot of that at all, even with uh, our friends and family. But just having the humanity, following those urges to say a kind word uh, to, to someone else, it, um, it can really mean a lot in terms of not only serving that person, but also reminding yourself of the, uh, the power that you really do have. So those are the highlights, the, uh, the episode spotlights I have for you today. Again, it's the, uh, uh, suicide prevention lifeline at 1-800-273-8255. And just a reminder that you yourself, you have a lot more strength. You can make much more of a difference than, you realize. And with that, folks, let's jump into our interview with John Williams. I was a dweeby kid. Really? Uh, yeah, totally, totally just just dweeby kid, man. Uh, so not only was I not into sports like the other jocks around here, uh, you know, growing up in elementary school and stuff like that, I wasn't even good at school. So I wasn't even like a, you know, I wasn't even your nerdy dweeb either. You know, it was just mm. bad all around. Mm. But I loved, I, I found, I found solace, you know, an adventure in the woods and stuff like that. Um, but growing up, got picked on a lot uh, because I was introverted. I was quiet. Um, and what I found was growing up with those same kids, you know, from elementary school through high school, um, rebranding yourself. I changed obviously in the process, but everybody knew John as the quiet introverted kid. Um, so something happened to me. Something happened. Uh, you know, it was never great at school, not good at sports. I never, I was getting, you know, um, affirmation and validation from all sorts of places that were not healthy for myself, you know, constantly looking for it from, from girls and, you know, um, dirtbag guys that I had no business hanging around with. Um, but something happened and I found something I was good at. Mm. And at age 14, uh, I took strength and condition uh, in high school. And I was like, boom, damn, I found it. Hmm. I found the thing I can do. And, and from there, you know, immediately I, I saw, I, I know, uh, God bless my parents. Uh, I'm, genetically, I just responded very well. You know, I found I could develop myself really well early on. Uh, so high school, I was spent in the gym, but there was still something missing because any time, cause you know, the, the, these same people, these same guys that I grew up with that still knew me as that introverted kid, you know, they're looking at me and seeing a different guy, a guy that could, you know, when you see somebody that, you know, can do some damage, but yet that guy didn't know how to do any damage. If that makes any sense. Uh, physically, I'm, I'm strong. But I don't know how to use these. I don't know how to use my legs. And furthermore, I didn't know that I had what it took to go and just work somebody over. You know? I didn't know that I had what it took to stand up for myself. And so graduating high school, uh, I'm about 19. A friend of mine says, uh, hey, I got into boxing. Whatever. My friend was uh, uh, very overweight. And it seemed just beyond odd that he would, you know, get into boxing. 
it didn't make any sense to me. And he, he begged me a couple of times to come down to the community center and said, uh, Hey, I just want you to try this out. Just come down with me and try it out. And I, I still had this overt fear of getting punched and getting hit, you know, just from getting beat up and picked on as a kid. And, um, we went down there and I remember I got my hands wrapped up for the first time. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and, uh, put these 16 ounce gloves on, you know, uh, and, uh, worked with a trainer doing some mitt work with it. I didn't, I didn't know what I was doing. Um, but I remember when, you know, I made that first contact, made that first mitt contact and you just hear it. You know, they put their, they put their force in with the mitt coming right at your hand and you just pop and you just hit it and you know, and you're like, maybe I can do this. Maybe I can do this. I've de- physically, I've physically developed myself, and I'm I'm continuing to develop myself. But I have what it takes to be dangerous, mm. and it wasn't so much dangerous because I wanted to be a dangerous, violent human being. Mm. It was more I wanted to know that I had what it took to stand up for myself. Uh, because leading up to that point in my life, um, I always backed away from the confrontation. Uh, I had it in my head that I was less and that I didn't have what it took and that I was not capable. I was not man enough to do the hard stuff and stand my ground because I didn't know what I could do. Hmm. And so uh, I went back to the gym, that same, that same gym, the community center. And, uh, over the next year or so and, uh, learned a lot, just absorbed it from 19 to, uh, maybe 20, 21, 22 or so. Uh, I have an amateur record of drum roll. Oh, and two. <laughs> it's uh my one of my favorite lines is i know just enough to get my ass kicked pretty good so uh, <laughs> but you know from that point i knew the day-to-day stuff mm. i could stand up for myself mm. that i had what it took to take the fight to somebody else that i now am validated on my own as a human being and as a man to take control of that part of my life. Mm-hmm. And it, it offered a lot of healing looking on back, mm. you know, uh, it offered a lot of just emotional and, and mental healing to know, you know, I just wanted to run back to that, that seven year old kid that I was at one time, just give him a hug. And be like, Hey, it's going to be all right. You know, it's okay. It's okay. You're going to have, it. you're going to get there. And, and that was, it was a pivot point in my life because I could walk around with confidence. Mm. Well, as soon as I learned how to use my hands and how to move my feet, it just pivoted my life. And like, like I said, the confidence to just walk around, not that you're a Billy badass, not that you're looking for a fight, not that you ever want to be violent, but if you had to, you could. And so fast forward um, to uh, age 30, <clears throat> another pivotal point in, in, in my life. Uh, we had already had one kid, and I think we had one on the way. So um, my oldest is now, he'll be five here in a couple months, and my youngest just turned two. Um, so this is just not that long ago. So in town, uh, there was a TGI Fridays and a homeless schizophrenic man walks in and he pulls out an eight inch fixed blade knife and he says the words, I am going to kill everybody in this restaurant. I wasn't in that TGI Fridays, thankfully. Um, but when the news came out that that guy ended up eventually being, you know, shot, uh, 
um, when that hit the, the news and the radio, it hit me full force, ton of bits. What if I was in that restaurant with my two year old at the time and my wife looking at me? Now, all of a sudden, the game's changed. It's not about validating John as the human being. It's moving the hands, the legs, the knowledge I've gained into being a protector, being the sheepdog that, that I, I think if, if you're a man and you consider yourself a man, you've got a wife and kids, you've got a duty to be a sheepdog. I fully believe it. And that doesn't mean you have to be the toughest, the baddest, but you've got to be aware and you've got to know how to defend yourself. And so then uh, I, I just went full bore because, uh, you know, every fight's going to go to the ground. So let's just let's look into jujitsu. Every fight in the street goes to the ground. I'm not going to have time to wrap my hands in public. And if I had to, I'm not going to have a minute, time. Just a minute. Just, just hang on. Hold on. Just hang on a second. <laughs> you know, I can't go get my gloves. Um, I can't do these things. And it's eventually going to go to the ground. It's going to be violent right away. So learning how to handle myself on the ground, still in the process of it, um, learning how to incorporate legs. Uh, as a 5'7", uh, not very flexible guy, uh, <laughs> you, know, you know what it's like throwing those roundhouse, roundhouse kicks. Uh, learning how to incorporate legs, how to move, and then you know, sort of getting into the crawl, that just maximum, uh, just devastation, uh, the, the fluid movement, self-defense stuff, if I have to. Um, really incorporating all those things in my mind. So for me, the fight now is to be the protector. The fight is to be the sheepdog of my family. I've incorporated firearms training with all that stuff as well. Um, if, if, it's, if it's legal where you are, why wouldn't you do it? Uh, it is my approach to it. I know it can be a hot button political issue, but uh, regardless, why would you not if you could? Why would you not do it? Why would you not learn everything you can to protect yourself and your family? You're not going out to look for a fight. You're going out to protect your family daily. And so that's that's my current fight, and that's what I do. That's awesome, dude. Oh God, we can go everywhere with this one. It's crazy. <laughs> ah, so excited. But dude, okay, I want to bring it back a bit. I want to go back to that because that's really interesting. When you talked about um, you know, you found strength and conditioning. You started bulking up yeah. a bit, you know? And on the outside, people it's easy for people to think, hey, whoa, this is a big dude. You know, you you should have your validation already. But was it such that the people that knew you as that dweeb, as that skinny kid, were still on you, even as you you bulked up? It, they didn't. You didn't change in their eyes. You know, they could see the physical change, um, but this is where I think this is this is what this was the problem. Is in my head, I was still the dweeb. Mm. I found some validation into making myself look better and feel better. And for, but for all intents and purposes, all I did was train my body to lift heavier stuff. Mm. That's it. Mm. John the Dweeb was still there, the introvert, the quiet guy that had no uh, uh, faith in himself, although a little bit more. You know, I found something I was good at. Mm-hmm. Um, he still didn't know if he could do it. And By doing I it, couldn't, let's be very clear about doing yeah, it as yeah, yeah. in somebody doing is picking on you. Stand, <laughs> that, that alone. Yeah. Um, standing up for myself, standing up for uh, somebody else being picked on. Mm. Um, you know, I, uh, situation at that time in my life, uh, I saw an employee of mine that I worked with uh, uh, through no fault of his own get into an altercation with uh, a guy in a parking lot. Mm. And 
I went up to him and approached it, hoping that, you know, uh, size would uh, deter, but it doesn't. And then what? I just bluffed myself into, into an issue. And, dude, I had to tuck my tail and turn around and not – it's not so much that I'm looking for that fight, but I, I wasn't able to show up for that coworker. You know what I'm saying? And those are the types of things that, you know, you look back on and you're like, oh, it sticks with you, man. I couldn't do it. Mm. And so this recurring theme and this negative narrative continues to go through your head. And although on the outside, I'm looking good and better and lean and, 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 and well, mm. on the inside, nothing changed. Because the stakes are different. Things change. They always the stakes always rise as as we get older, mm -hmm. and you know, uh, especially when it comes with age. You know, you move out of the high school stuff, and you get into college and and whatnot. Then then you know the daily grind of the workplace. Well, I don't want to mess up my job, so I never have to. You think you're never going to get into an altercation as an adult, you know? So a lot of people don't even think about. It. Uh, they, they learn to fight with their words. Um, I, they learn to talk themselves out of things and, you know, talking is always the first route to go. Uh, there's an art of negotiation in that as well. But at the end, of, at the end of that day, you've got to be able to back up what you're doing, and what you're saying, and especially when you get to that next stage, when they raise the stakes and you've got kids. <laughs> which is a it, it is my absolute motivating factor to keep them safe keep my wife safe that's something when i uh when i uh, i teach and it's very simple uh very easy rather for for people to stick with the what i call the ones and twos right oh you've got oh you got this combo down cool no, okay you've got this flow drill down okay that's cool um, that's just the ones and twos, though. You know? That's <laughs> There's just a whole bunch of them. Uh, was that. There's a whole bunch of them. Yeah, and it's just yeah, and we can I, I can we can keep on feeding you these things, and you know some people that's all they're ready for, that's all they're willing to take on, right? And that's just right. They signed up, okay, get the next next belt, get the next stripe, whatever whatever it might, might be. That's just how they operate. But for me, I'm like. There's a difference between that and the ones and twos. You can do the ones and twos here. But then now there's this. There's like, ooh, there's something going on. You know, there's something that this can go beyond just doing a dance. Right? Exactly. So that's why, I mean, and that's very challenging to for people, I think, because, well, two things. One is that... <clears throat> They might not be willing to go down that route. <laughs> you know, it's like, oh, the emotional thing. No, no, no. I just want to. I just want to do my thing here. You know, don't want to really put some stakes on it. But the second thing, it's 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 hard to do. It's it's hard to do. Um, you know, and I and I say like you know I even if as as much as I'd want to put that on them where. You know, imagine this scenario, and I'm not one of these fear mongering kind of guys, right? It's like, oh, did you see the news or this and that, or you know, this might happen to you or anything. It's just like, so I try to, you know, I try. I'm not trying not to traumatize them, have it all fear based, but I want them to think about. It. It's like, you know, so I use these kind of fun examples where, okay, you know, I got kids or whatever too, and it's like, imagine that uh, you're at a baby shower, you know, and you reach over and you get that, oh, it's the last cupcake here. And then someone comes up to you and says, hold, hold, hold on a minute. I think you've got my cupcake. <laughs> you know? <laughs> oh, no, no, here, take it, take it, take it. Oh, no, 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 no. You, you already got your hands all over it. I think we got a problem. You know, so something like right, that. Yeah, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. But getting it so that they can have some of that emotional bit in there. Now, again, I put a little bit of uh, levity in there. But that's the thing. It's like, hey, I'm not looking for you to traumatize yourself in, like, what-if scenarios. But you got to have a bit of a stake. And that changes what goes on in here yeah. when you have resistance that changes what goes on over here 
Exactly. You know, so so very very, very well said. Very different. But here, here's the thing. I, you know, physical, lifting the weights, going for the runs, that type of thing. That's very different than what you had experienced hitting that mitt. Absolutely. You know? What was that? Because, I mean, arguably, you're, you're benching probably 10 times what the weight was that you're hitting in, the, in that mitt. What, what was it that, that clicked? I think two things, two things. One, I just, I realized in that moment that I could do it mm. and that, that I, that I could be, that the potential to be dangerous was in me the entire time. You were and affecting two, somebody else. Yes. It wasn't just metal. <laughs> Correct. Mm. And two, I, I, I turned that mitt into a person. Ah. Not a specific person, but in that moment when I heard that pop, and I felt that that pop, mm. you know, I knew if that was somebody mm. right there, they were going to feel it. Mm. And two, I got to do what had been done to me. Mm. If that makes if that makes sense. And it wasn't this uh, it wasn't this, you know, revenge seeking sort of. You know, I wasn't going, yeah. I'm not looking to make a name or anything like that. Yeah. But when I say it was an emotionally healing moment, when I realized that that's all it took, I I, I just, I, I didn't even hit it full force. Mm. They didn't hit me with full force. So why did it affect me as bad as it did when I was a kid, mm. you know, growing up? And I got to feel what it was like on the other side. And I learned that I could, I could use my hands and I could use my knowledge to stop that from happening. Mm. You know, I, I could become that, that sheepdog, you know, for myself mm. for once. Mm. And this, that's all prior to kids and, and, you know, people that you just naturally look after. But now I can watch out for, now I can watch out for John, mm. you know? And it, that, that was just a very different thing because being strong, and being dangerous are not, they are not the same thing. I dig it. There's, there is an inherent ability in, in both, but like Hoist Gracie, you know, uh, I'm sure he's just very, he's naturally strong anyway, but looking at the guy, mm -hmm. how many guys did he take down with just simple, you know, not simple, but very complex, just Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. I mean, ultimate equalizer size didn't matter in that instance. So size, strength doesn't equal danger. Mm. And in that moment, I was dangerous. Mm. I learned that I had what it took and I could be dangerous. Well, because you felt that you had felt that danger inflicted upon you yeah. growing up. Yeah. And that's, you know, uh, I, there, there is a possibility here that I'm overstating just how much danger I really was in. Um, it's, it's minimal, but I was picked on. I was pushed around, um, because I was introverted. Yeah. Well, we've and, got hindsight for this, right? I mean, yeah, you yeah, talk yeah. to that seven year old, <laughs> you talk to that seven year old kid, you know, they'll, they'll tell you exactly, you know, it's, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, that's all hindsight there, but man, this is, and this, this is the next thing. And this is my current, my current position and where I'm at. So I'm guarding my family. I'm in sheepdog mode now. I'm, I'm keeping my eyes open. I'm, I've actually trained my wife a handful of times. I'm like, you know, you need to keep your eyes on that exit. Where's the exits? You know, she was in a Walmart here and they had a bomb scare. Well, it wasn't so much a bomb scare. It was a suspicious package. And, uh, you know, everybody was flooding out the main, the main door. And she called and she said, Hey, what should I do? And I'm like, don't go out the same damn door. Everybody else is going out. Let's go out a side exit, you know, just simple things like that. But this is where I'm at now. I have two boys who could go through the exact same things I did. 
So while, while I'm watching out, I'm also instilling my kids. My son and I, my oldest son, he loves to wrestle. He loves to wrestle with that. And I let him punch me in the face as hard as he can. Every night, every day, uh, you know, even my two-year-old will go downstairs. He finds that heavy bag and he just starts, he, he'll push it really hard as he can. It comes back and knocks him on his butt. And, you know, uh, just so I'm feeling the need to watch over the family. But at the same time, I got to raise that next generation of sheepdogs. Mm. I got to teach them to watch out for themselves. You got that down. Now let's watch out for the other people that are in your life mm. and that, you know, uh, that you care about. Mm. Choose your, choose your battles and your fights wisely. There's no need to take up every, you know, every cause out there, mm-hmm. but that's so important, man. Raising that next generation of men to not necessarily be dangerous people to be around Mm -hmm. but they're capable of it Mm -hmm. if that makes sense so not not, we're not looking for violence Mm -hmm. we're looking for ability Mm -hmm. if that makes sense yeah well how do you that's interesting because i mean when it gets right down to it all we've got are our hands (laughs) (laughs) and you can use your hands on, on somebody else you can you can force some stuff, you know? Yes, you can. So, uh, so absolutely pick and choose your battles. How do you, how do you temper that? I mean, how do you, I guess, guide that? It's funny because the one thing I learned in, in this, and I've heard some professional uh, fighters say things very similar. Um, it's the the patience grows when you learn that you can do something and hurt somebody your tolerance level for their nonsense tends to go up mm. you can take and take and take and take and take yeah i can i will remove myself from situations there's an onus on you to not go out there and pick up every fight and every cause mm. so I guess there comes a respect for your human, your human man or a human, humankind, mankind. There comes a natural respect for the people around you and treating people the way that you would want to be treated yourself. And oftentimes it's the case. It comes down to that simple golden rule. So, you know, you're dangerous and you can also get yourself in trouble Mm. when you're dangerous. Um, putting somebody on the ground quickly, uh, for, you know, spilling their, their beer on your shirt at a restaurant. It's a little overkill. You know what I'm saying? (laughs) Um, removing yourself as opposed to getting in a confrontation with somebody who's overly drunk, just leaving, Mm -hmm. you know, somebody's just slurring out stuff, uh, that's, that's nonsensical, you know, about your wife or your girlfriend. And you're going to have this, this tug of, do I go just beat this guy now mm-hmm. or do I just leave? Mm. And that's really going to depend on the stage of life that you're in and every situation. Um, if I was out right now and somebody started uh, yelling at my wife, I don't know exactly what I would do. <laughs> <laughs> if, you want to be, if you want me to be absolutely <laughs> honest about it, yes. um, and it will depend on the day and exhaustion <laughs> and if my kids are with me or not and just how uh, feisty I'm feeling, you know? Um, <laughs> but before I do that, I'm going to go through this checklist in my head of, is this really worth fighting? Mm. Is this something I want to take up? What are the ramifications of what I'm going to do? Uh, is this better off? Is Am I going to set a better example if I just get up and leave? Mm. Can I diffuse this with my words first? Um, those sorts of, those sort of situations. If I can't leave, can I talk this, can I talk this down and deescalate this quickly? Uh, my mannerisms, your hand mannerisms, the way you position your body is going to tell a lot of things and, you know, get somebody fired up and, 
you know, you stand up, puff your chest out and, uh, <laughs> you know, you know how it is. Uh, those are, those are escalating moves mm. and every situation is different. And you're going to know when you're in one that isn't going to go anywhere good. Mm. And I pray to God that I'm not in one for the rest of my life. Mm. But I don't find that as any excuse to not be prepared for it. Consequences. Consider consequences. Right? Major one, yeah. I mean, I'm I'm 34 now. Mm-hmm. Uh, got a good thing going with work. Um, I love my wife. She's beautiful. I got two awesome kids. Nice little home. Um, I go out there, you know, wearing some guy out. There's consequences. There's jail time, which affects home, which affects money, affects yeah. I don't want to have to call my wife and be like, "Yeah, I got in a fight." You know, it's <laughs> like I'm out. not, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not 20 anymore. You know, yeah. go to fight. <laughs> it's just, it's you don't want to have to do it. So you reserve it. You know, and the same same thing they teach with firearms. Mm-hmm. You know, you're not going to ever ever pull that thing out until you know that it has to be used. Mm. It's not an intimidation factor. So you don't go up and escalate the situation. You're not going to go up and puff yourself out and, and be a billy badass and and you know it's these are escalating moves. Mm. So the consequences that you have to doing these things now are enormous. Mm. Um so I definitely go through those and consider those when when it happens and you know there's always a puncher's chance you can kill that guy mm-hmm. absolutely well i mean we talk about like consequences in terms of very big right okay well the jail time and that type of thing but even and you know this too even in the ring right every little thing you do the, the call them micro consequences right mm-hmm. there's something there if you're holding your if you're hold your guard down three inches there could be very bad consequences. Right. You know, and I think that's the thing when, you know, particularly when you're talking about just getting that, that immediate realization when you hit that mitt. Wow. You know, and you could feel that you got immediate feedback, which is very different from most other things in life. <laughs> right? Yeah. You know, you think you, you sit down on that bench and you push it up. And although it's heavy, uh, uh, it, it doesn't seem to have any, there's no life to it. Mm. And when you are working one with a trainer in mitts, if you're working with a heavy bag, you know, you're going to hit a person with mitts on. Mm-hmm. And he's coming back at you at the same time. If you've got a heavy bag in front of you, pop, that thing's going to swing. Mm. And now you've got it in motion. Mm. Now you've got a dance and a rhythm going. And, you know, uh, if you've got a speed bag, which you don't ever want to see me on a speed bag, it's just (laughs) embarrassing. Uh, But uh, it's all of a sudden in motion. Mm. And there's just something very alive and very human about and 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 dare I say for for men and women, both very primal Mm. about about you, you just connect with you feel like you connect with generations back that have had to just do some crazy stuff with their hands uh, using their hands. And it's just very, there's a very human thing in learning how to do it. It's really interesting to me because it's, you know, it, and as much as we have all this technology and um, education, intellectualization, trying to suppress <laughs> a lot of yes, that, right. Yes. It still comes back to that because even in, with somebody that, even with somebody that works in an office building for a living, they will come back to talking about their job, talking about working with this client or that customer or their coworker as a fight. <laughs> right? Hold, hold. Very well said, yes. Like... Even in all of that, it still comes back to those terms. Every time. You know, even if it's just a verbal spat now, it's a fight. 
what do you do with your wife? You fight. Mm -hmm. What do you do? You, what do your kids do with each other? They fight. Mm -hmm. It's, um, it's very interesting that we can have the terminology still. And then it's something that comes. It's just primal and instinctive to everybody to, to, to eventually, eventually you've got this, this pushing point. And there's people out there with, uh, you know, uh, they don't have the right gumption, I guess, to, to fight for themselves, let alone other people. But I think for the majority of us, there's this point at which we are, uh, you can push me so far, you know, before I'm going to do something, even the dweeb, you can push him so far before something happens. But I feel like even though we use the context of fighting all the time and it's something that we can't get away from is something that's very instinctual to us as human beings. Nobody knows how to do it. Mm. Or very few, mm. very few know how to do it. Mm. You know? And I'm not saying that I, <laughs> Owen two is not very threatening. <laughs> so <I'm> just... <laughs> I think it's such that, it may be a, uh, it may be a difference of 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 perspective or even terminology in terms of the fighting because look my wife I, when I first started I'd be like come on punch me in the stomach give, give me give me some conditioning come on do this right and she'd come up to me she's like and her hands would get all sweaty she's like I don't you know she's looking away and I'm like this is not helping me. You've got to, you've got to, right. and she would not do that, right? That, that's one thing. Yet, same lady, you know, granted, you know, <laughs> four, yeah, four, uh, coming on four, three kids later, right. something gets in the way, and there's a challenge with one of her, her babies. There's no, it's not even about the terminology of fight anymore. It's right. like, it's mama protect. Right it's yes, go. It's, so if there's something in there goes. that in the one instance, she's thinking about it. Oh, I don't want to do this. Intellectualizing. This is not the right thing. Kind of, you know, uh, there's a justification for it. Right. Or a, um, or just, um, her perspective of it. And she wasn't, she couldn't even like, I'd, I'd turn on like pride fights. Right. And she's like, oh, I can't, I can't watch. She couldn't even be in the same room. <laughs> Could not even be in the same room. You know, when I'm going to get my belt testing, right, and I'm going five, six, ten, you know, how many guys that I got to fight in a row, she could not look at that. You know, yet, when it comes down to something like this, where it is, like, it is primal, she may not call it fighting, but she knows how to fight, you know? So I guess it's very important to define the fight. Define your fight. Yeah. For everybody. Yeah. 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 Me? So props to you. Uh, I would, if I allowed my wife to hit me. <laughs> oh, <laughs> bing, bang, boom, dude. I'm, yeah. I'm down. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you go, man. I mean, yeah. <laughs> yeah, she doesn't have as many, um, your wife doesn't have as many, um, any uh, as many locks on that door <laughs> for in you that she's got to like fiddle with. Okay, what's the combination here? Like, oh no, that door is wide open. <laughs> Let's go in. That's great. Yeah, but that's I think that's that's a big deal, and I find it all the time. Um, I mean, in the dojo I teach, you get these people that that come in there and listen. This, you know, we talk this way, absolutely no disrespect to them. Everyone's got something that they're going through. Everyone's got their histories with all the, this type of stuff. But um, and yeah, the biggest thing that I have to help people through, particularly within the first six months to a year of their training, is being okay doing this on somebody else. Even in a training environment. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Like, they're okay. And this is one thing, this is one of my pet peeves. I, I just, almost every week I have to say something about this. Is when people hold pads, particularly like, you know, say a crop pad or like a shield or something like that. Don't get me, get me started on mitts. 
but like they're they're holding it and they're holding it in a way that is they might I mean they're just they're not reacting. They're not active. I call it, you know, active pad holding. They're not they're not doing that. They're just here. And I'm like, you know what? If you're going to do that, I might as well have just sent them onto that heavy bag over there. You know? This is a two-way street here. So they're okay getting pummeled. <laughs> you know? <laughs> Absolutely. But they're not, but they're not, um, you know, they're thinking that, like, even just moving around and, like, anticipating what's, what's coming is a form of aggression. Right? Mm. Like, it's something where it's, it's so ingrained in them that not to hit somebody that they're not even looking for an opportunity not to get hit themselves, right? They're just like, okay, let me just take it, you know? And you see, like, dude, I, I'm sure you've seen it, right? Um, the active self-protection guy, all these other guys, like, they'll, 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 they'll comment on these on the CCTV stuff, you know, or the, 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 the phone um, uh, cam stuff, where you see the victims, the victims, and... They're this, like this, the whole yes. time. Yes. And it's so ingrained in in our culture now. It's like working inside is better than working outside, right? Working on the computer is better, uh, is, is more desirable than working with your hands kind of thing. Yes. More and more, more of that goes, uh, gets more pervasive it's a shame, particularly in more developing countries, right? Like in China, like they're looking to, oh yeah, I want that too. I don't want to be hot outside or that type of thing. I don't want to be fighting all the time. I, I love it if I'm not fighting, <laughs> <laughs> you know, right? Which is speaks to your, which speaks to your point of like, hey, there's some consequences, but ultimately, you know, there, there are times when you gotta gotta be the sheepdog. Well, nobody wants to be the sheepdog. They just know they have yeah. to be, right? Yeah. And if somebody other, has to do it, yeah. But uh, but ultimately, like, hey, listen. If I had a choice of going the easier, uh, the easy way or the hard way, you know, nine times out of ten, I'm going an easier, air conditioned way. <laughs> Absolutely, I think a lot of that comes, you know, generations past want want it better for their kids, and you know, along with that came the niceties. I mean, we're in. Uh, you can't say that. Uh, yeah, we're in America, and it's it's it is a relatively very peaceful country. Obviously, we have random acts of horrible violence from time to time, but you, we, we live in a bubble for the most part, and these bubbles just keep getting passed down, down from generations. I was told not to fight. I was told to turn the other cheek, you know, and uh, while, while there's, you know, I was, I was raised very uh, uh, conservative Christian, like. And while, you know, turning the other cheek is very biblical, uh, uh, I believe standing your ground is also very, you know, not just getting pummeled. Uh, I believe that's also very biblical. Um, so I think a lot of what we see in society is a lot of just the watering down and I, I don't like to say dumbing down, but I, I think every generation wants it better than you know for the next generation i want my kids to have it better than i did i hope they're better men than me i hope they treat their wives better than me i hope you know they lift more than me uh for for whatever area of success that they want to launch into or area of life they want to launch into i hope it's better than mine but what i don't want is for them to lose sight of their own masculine identity and i can't speak to having girls i just got two knucklehead boys um so i'm sure there's something very similar for for females um i i can't help let them at least not know how to use their hands they could choose to be you know use you know be at a desk job be indoors all day uh i don't care you still got to know how to work or not, not, not work in the sense of what you're doing indoors is not work. But I mean, you need to know how to use your hands. You need to know how to do the hard things, how to take care of yourself, how to take care of those around you. I can't let the the generations pass and wanting it so better. Uh, 
that we're in this little bubble of of this false sense of protection. Yeah. Is it really better at that point? Is it really better because bubbles pop? Mm. <laughs> they they, they often, get popped. They get popped. They get <laughs> popped. And often tragically. Mm. Um, and, you know, there's there's a very big, yeah, I, w- I would say violent contact sports. Yeah, I guess you can't call them violent. But contact sports are often looked down upon for that reason. Mm. Everybody thinks they're going to get their kid in and, and they're going to go get beat up or beat somebody up your uh, your baser nature right yeah 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 (laughs) your your kid's gonna be 19 and 0 and 2 yeah uh you know (laughs) um so i i think that plays a lot into it is i think that's how we got where we are anyway Mm, mm. no no i I appreciate that man particularly for from for me where I, I was that I was that guy, right? It was I was very. I learned to talk my way out of a lot of things, you know. And it's not a bad thing. No, yet when I didn't feel, I didn't feel like I had any other options, right? I mean, we talk about empowering people a lot. Empower your kids. Empower this group or that group. But they're very specific about how they want them to be empowered. Right. For my girls, they have no choice. <laughs> they have no choice but to go to the tow show. <laughs> I, I, you know, that's I, awesome. I say, I say, you know, like we're not real church going. Although my uh, girls are starting to ask about it, we'll probably start taking them. But you know, I used to say, um, you know, some 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 families go to church every week. We go to the dojo. <laughs> you know, so if you need something to compare it to, that's what we're doing here. Right. I can't tell you whether they enjoy it or not, because quite frankly, I don't care. What I do care about is that they are challenged in this way. Yes. They're challenged in a way that they learn how to balance themselves on one foot. You know? Uh, my, my, uh, my wife just came back with uh, my girls, the oldest, um, she's taking flute lessons. Right, so she's got uh, she's got a feel of that. She's got a feel of like, oh, I've got a goal here that I've got to go to. Um, it's a recital, okay, and I've got to practice for that a bit. She's kind of starting to learn a little a little bit of that. Um, but I'd love the same for this. I'd love the same for this. When now there's there's definitely this. There's definitely that heart. There's definitely that emotion in those uh, situations, right? She's got, she knows she's got tests coming up or something like that for, for school or any of them, you know. But it's a very different feeling than when this body is at stake. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Things change. Yeah. Like, you and can't they require learn a different, uh, yeah, a different level of, 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 seriousness mm. and like what you're a you learn more about like for you when you're when you're when you're boxing right even you know whether you're just do, sparring getting ready for your amateur bouts or even in there very different kind of test that you're taking there oh yeah right oh yeah oh, i mean yeah. even even in the escalation of it escalation from myths to Okay, now we're now we're this thing's going to dance. This this I'm yeah. Somebody's going to dance with me, <laughs> and they're trying to hurt me. Yeah, this isn't a bag that's going to swing. This isn't somebody holding their arms up. This thing is going to come back at me. Yeah, uh, and they're going to try to do to me what I'm trying to do to it. Yeah, yeah. Now, how changes how, that level? How did you deal with that kind of change for yourself? Like as you're going through and realizing this escalation in risk <laughs> to your body. <laughs> well, I, I can't, you know, I, I can't speak too much into sparring. Um, I'm, I haven't, I was able to, to roll, uh, last, uh, not too long ago, roll with a, a guy who was, uh, six foot seven, uh, compared, <laughs> compared to my, 
five foot seven uh, frame, and uh, that actually ended up being a ton of fun. Obviously, I got twisted into a pretzel, but uh, uh, you know, I gave it hell, and that's what you got to learn to do. Um, but I think for that particular time in my life, when you know you're 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 progressing and progressing and progressing. And you know, at some point in time, that you're going to have to go up against a person. Mm. Um, And they're also, you know, progressing and progressing and progressing. And so immediately, and this, this transcends so many different tasks in life, when you can understand that that other person is just as equally nervous or intimidated. Mm. Intimidated is not the, the, the right term, but there should be a healthy appreciation for an opponent, whether it be, you know, never underestimating, never thinking you've got this. Mm. Um, but there should always be that healthy understanding and appreciation but it's so easy to look at your opponent and, you know, whether it's the, the uh, drunk guy at the bar, whether it's uh, the homeless schizophrenic guy that comes in, it's so easy to look at them and just see the danger that they bring mm. and the imminent threat they are. Mm. But you can't look into... You can't look from their perspective and see the danger you are Mm. and the threat you can be. And I think when you can wrap your mind around that, whether you're actually going to spar, whether you're actually going into, um, you know, if if you're ever having, if you're ever unfortunately in a situation where you have to deal with uh, uh, somebody. And, you know, you can parlay this many ways into different tasks of life and at work and, and things like that. that. That person's progressed to this point in life. You know, their experiences have put them to here. And they're no different than the experiences you've had. And you are a dangerous individual. And you are more than capable of bringing the fight that you have within you mm. to them. So in a sense, you have to lay it all out on the line. And intimidation is just, it's, it's, it is, I can't tell you in honest sincerity, you know, I train for that, 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 that crazy guy. I train for the crazy guy. I train for, I mentally go through, you know, the OODA loop and, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm waiting for the active shooter situation someday. I don't, I pray to God in heaven that it never happens. But even with everything that I've gone through and trained for and think about, Mm. I can't stand here and honestly tell you that I won't freeze in my tracks when that comes, when that time comes. Mm. I hope I don't. Mm -hmm. I think about it. I'm familiar with, uh, you know, uh, violence and I'm familiar with how to defend myself. Um, but when it comes to, you know, that, that moment, Mm -hmm. you have to be able to throw your entire self at that situation and say, why not me? Why can't I do it just with reckless abandon, but also balanced out with as much training and knowledge as you have and putting it all on the line in that moment. And that's how you, as you're leading up to it, and you know that this is going to happen and go down, that's how you combat that that fear, that intimidation. You have to know that you are just as worthy to be where you are in that ring, on this planet, in this workplace, in that bar, in that sh- that movie theater, wherever you are and wherever you got to fight, you are just as worthy as an individual to be there Mm. as that person coming in. Mm. And you got to defend that and you got to throw yourself at it. And when you can do that, when you can let yourself loose, 
you don't have, you're not intimidated. Hmm. When you can just let it go and go after it, you've, you've got this, I hate saying the word kill switch, but you've got this switch in your head. You don't have time to be intimidated. Hmm. It's not there. You don't have time. They're just as scared of you anyway. Hmm. They're used to intimidating people. Why not you? Yeah, it's like that that mental dialogue that you might have uh, that you had that was kind of keeping keeping the beast in that um, it just goes away, and then look, there's a freedom to that. There is, yeah. When you just when that moment comes, mm. when that moment comes for me. And I'm no longer intimidated to, you know, uh, uh, more so, number one, uh, afraid of my wife. Mm -hmm. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Number two, I'm not afraid to go to jail. Mm -hmm. Number three, you know, is this going to affect my job? Obviously, going to jail is going to affect my job. Is this going to affect my finances, my overall physical Mm well-being? And when I can get past those, Mm -hmm. I know I'm a threat. And I know I'm dangerous and I'm not intimidated. Mm. If, if the threat has moved past those, Mm -hmm. it's game on, man. Mm. Uh, and you know, that, that applies to, to, like I said, different areas of life for sure. But, you know, uh, for the context of this conversation, just with, uh, just with physical altercations and and things like that. Well, absolutely. Just, just think, you know, what are the, what, rules are you allowing to keep it in you know you know real or or imagined right i mean ultimately it's all in our imagination anyway but there comes a uh, comes a point and particularly you know and of course give it in the context of of uh, the situation but you know your your amateur boxing fights you know it's like well, what are the rules there well, I know the rules about how we're supposed to interact inside this ring. But then beyond that, it's, well, what are the rules that you have about how you're, you know, you're feeling about this person, right? Or what this person exactly. could do to you or like, what are you thinking of? You know, it's like almost, you know, are you thinking about defense of what they're going to do to you? Or are you thinking about, ooh, I could do some stuff. Right, that's what I've been training for, and then it's like, oh, unleash, unleash. It the is. Beast. It is funny you say that because I do idolize defensive fighters. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, they just stand back and uh, you know they're reactionary instead of push, pushing the uh, the fight. But yeah. uh, no, I, I understand what you're saying for sure. Well, dude, even with that though, even with that, right? Because they're not winning purely on defense; they still got a hit, right? It's it's a strategy. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's a strategy. But then, like, you know, I, I have to remind myself about that sometimes. Like, I'm, I'm sparring with some particular some people that I'm trying to, it's a balance, because I'm trying to bring them up a little bit as well. Mm-hmm. And then I forget, like, oh, that's right, I can move around too. <laughs> exactly, yeah. Oh, let me slip, let me slip, let me counter. Oh, yeah, much better. This feels so much better I can now. do all this. I got the freedom. Oh, let's go. Or, like, they escalated a bit. I'm like... I guess I could escalate too. Okay, let's go. <laughs> <You know? laughs> yeah, and that's the, you always want to, and that's something we get trapped in as well often is we match level of intensity with level of intensity. Mm, yes. You know, uh, when we're capable of so much more. Mm. Oftentimes is the case, mm. I think. Uh, just like you said there, you know, somebody steps it up and you're like, oh yeah, I can do that too. Uh, as opposed to if you needed to just bring in the pain just do it and just get out there just haymakers <laughs> you know <laughs> Bruiser this was awesome I love this man this Dude. was fantastic and this conversation was way overdue by the way oh yeah <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> how we haven't talked like this I don't know. yeah no there's uh, many more of these in the future man but uh, love it I'm stoked man I appreciate you brother appreciate you too man all right folks i hope you appreciated that chat with john as much as i did um he is one of the guys that uh, i look to for just kind of guidance and and just you know 
finding true north. When I kind of uh, lose myself a little bit, I say, hey, what's John up to? And, you know, he, he really helps me to, to write my ship a lot of times. So anyway, that is it for today's episode, folks. Take care. This is Philip with the Everyday Fighter Podcast. Talk to you next time.